talk about assault for a little bit. When I say assault, what am I talking about? Any ionic compound. Any ionic compound. What are the two parts to ionic compounds? So, well, usually metal and non-metal, but not always, but always positive ion, negative ion, or cation and anion. So, if you look here, when we examine salts, salts can be acidic, salts can be basic, or salts can be neutral and have a pH close to 7. And so, what you have to do, though, for salts is you have to examine the cations separately, and you have to examine the anions separately. Now, if you recall, we talked about some of the Lewis acid examples that only fit Lewis's definition. Do you remember what those were? Metal ions was one of them, for sure. And then boron and aluminum containing compounds. But metal ions, metal ions form what kind of ions? Cations. Metal ions form cations. They like to lose electrons and form cations. And so we look at cations, because they have a positive charge, they fit Lewis's definition of an acid because they can potentially accept electrons. Being positive, they can attract and accept electrons. Metal ions also have empty orbitals to accept those into. So that's kind of what going, what's going on here with cations. Cations are usually acidic. They're usually electron acceptors in a Lewis sense. Whereas anions, having a negative charge, they usually have extra electrons. So what do you suppose they're probably going to react as? Bases, Lewis bases, or again, other definitions as well. But easy to look at from the Lewis context here. That's not what I want to say. And so anions are usually bases. And so when you examine a salt, when you look at the cation and you look at the anion, you should look at that cation and be like, oh, yeah, it's probably an acid. And you should look at that anion and say, yep, he's probably a base. And the key to doing, you know, evaluating the salt overall, though, is remembering the exceptions. So if you look at the cations here, the group one and two metal ions. And notice I specifically said the word metal because I don't want to include H plus in this. H plus is definitely an acid. But the group one and group two metal ions, they're negligible. They're not acidic virtually, you know, at all. Most other cations are. So some people also include transition metals that only have a plus one charge. If they only have a plus one charge in their transition metal, okay, they're probably not the most acidic things in the world. Notice in general, the higher the charge, the more acidic a cation is. So like if I was comparing Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus, well, they're both acidic. But Fe3 plus can attract electrons more since it's more positively charged. So in general, the higher the charge, the more acidic a compound is. And it's easiest to compare if it's the same element with a different charge. So like Fe2 plus, Fe3 plus, Fe3 plus more acidic. Question. Um, maybe I didn't understand that. Are you saying that the transition metal ions are negligible? Yeah, my bad. And negligible, that's great. Negligible. So any other cation I give you besides these guys will be an acid. These are the exceptions. Cool. Anions. Anions. If you look, if I have HCl, aqueous solution, how many intact HCl molecules should I expect to find in that solution? Essentially zero, because it dissociates completely. So how often should you find chloride? in that solution bound to a hydrogen? Never. What does that tell you about chloride's ability to accept a hydrogen? 
It doesn't. Cool. So if you recall, the stronger the acid, the weaker its conjugate base. Well, HCl is so strong that he can't even act as a base. A lot of students will remember this phrase, and some professors use it, and I really hate it. But they'll say that a strong acid has a weak conjugate base. It's not true. What's the definition of strong acid? Dissociates completely. What does a weak acid do? Dissociates how much? Only partially. How much does he dissociate? None. Then is he a weak base? No. He's even weaker than a weak base. And so a strong acid doesn't have a weak conjugate base in this case. What you can say is that the stronger an acid, the weaker the conjugate base. But in this case, a strong acid has a negligible conjugate base, not a weak conjugate base. It's a negligible one. And so in this case, the anions you've got to remember that are negligible are like Cl minus, Br minus, I minus, NO3 minus, ClO4 minus, ClO3 minus, all the conjugate bases of the strong acids. However, the other conjugate base of one of these is HSO4 minus. And what do you actually probably remember about HSO4 minus? He's actually what? He's actually acidic. So he's kind of one of the grand exceptions to the whole scheme here. Anions are usually bases and they're some negligibles. Well, he's acidic. Great. Okay, he's one of the big exceptions. Cool. So now let's look at some compounds here. Let's say we look at Let's look at these five compounds. And we're going to figure out these are all salts. They're all ionic. And we're going to figure out if each of these salts is an acidic salt, a basic salt, or a neutral salt. That's our goal. What I usually do to make the question, to make you know, figuring this out a little faster, instead of going like, look at the cation, then look at the anion, I usually look at all the cations at the same time. And I cross out the ones that are negligible. Which of those cations is negligible? So yeah, sodium's group one. We'll get rid of him. He's negligible. Barium's negligible. He's group two. So the group one and group two metal ions are negligible. They're not acidic. But all the rest, ooh, magnesium's also group two, isn't he? Yeah, let's get rid of magnesium here. My bad. Get rid of him as well. But any that aren't negligible are then by default what? Acidic. So we got two acidic cations left standing. Now let's go to the other side. So, and now I look at the anions and I figure out which anions are negligible. Which anions are negligible here? Yep, Cl is negligible. ClO4 is negligible. And any left, as long as it's not this one, anyways, are bases. And so if I look here, what kind of salt is NaCl? He's neutral. His pH is going to be pretty darn close to 7. He's not acidic. He's not basic. He's just negligible. You put NaCl in water, pH is still 7. What about BaF2? What kind of salt is he? Yeah, he's a negligible cation, but he has a basic anion. Overall, he's basic. So what about AlClO43? Yeah, he's got an acidic cation, a negligible anion, so overall, he's just acidic. So, and what about magnesium hydroxide? Basic. Yep, got a basic anion, a negligible cation. So, truth be told, guys, I actually made a rookie mistake here. I had actually intended to make this manganese hydroxide. Now, let's say I'd actually made this manganese hydroxide. Is manganese negligible? No, he's a transition metal, but is he plus one? He's plus two, so he's not one of the negligibles at all, and I wouldn't have crossed him out. 
And that's what I actually intended to do. And in this case, could you actually tell me for sure that this is a basic salt? Actually, you could still. Because hydroxide is a strong base. Manganese ions are just weak bases. If you see hydroxide, OK, well, then it's basic. Now, the last one here, though. Ammonium ions are acidic. Cyanide ions are basic. Who wins? Or does anybody win? Do you know if it's cyanide? Oh, you got your chart, don't you? Without that chart, though, you really can't answer this question. What you'd need is you'd need the Ka for ammonium ions, and you'd need the Kb for cyanide ions, and whichever one's higher would win. And so right now, you don't have enough info to answer this unless you have your lovely chart you were given. So, and on the test, if I really wanted you to answer this question for this last one, I'd have to give you his Ka and his Kb and let you figure it out. But it's not a commonly asked question because of the amount of info you got to be given. So, but if I said out of all of these, which one, when dissolved in water, would have a pH closest to 7, what should the correct answer be? NaCl. So which one would have an acidic solution? AlCl043. And again, this one we really don't know. So, but those are the kind of questions you might see. So in this case, manganese is acidic, hydroxide is a base. Is he more acidic or is he more basic? Well, this one you should know because the most basic thing you're ever going to study in this class is hydroxide. So he's going to win. He's a strong base. He's a weak acid. I could give you his Ka, but you wouldn't need his Kb. Hydroxide is just a strong acid. And so in this case, you'd know that this salt, the base, is going to win. Whereas if it's not hydroxide, though, and both the cation and anion are acidic and basic, that's when you don't know. And I would need to give you a K, A, or KB. But if the base is hydroxide, hydroxide wins. Cool. Practice this. It takes a little getting used to, but really common questions on this exam. And they're not hard if you know the rules. But the rules are just a little bit esoteric. If you notice, most of the negligible anions come from the strong acids. Most of the negligible cations come, or at least associated from, associated with the strong bases. The group one metal hydroxides are strong bases. Most of the group two metal hydroxides are strong bases as well. So it makes it somewhat easier to remember. The metal ions associated with strong bases, just the metal ion itself, though, is negligible. The anions that come from strong acids are negligible. Question? SO4, is that an anion that that can be negligible? Well, is SO4 the conjugate of a strong acid? Well, he's the conjugate of that. Is he a strong acid? No. no. And so in this case, SO4 would not be a negligible, so he'd, and he's not the exception, so he'd have to be an actual base for SO4 2 minus. Question? Cool, all based on context. In this case, manganese, you figure out his charge based on what anion he's with. Do you remember the charge of a hydroxide ion? Well, we've been talking about it all night. It's OH minus, so it's minus one. Oh, yeah. but, that, but the others, you'd have to remember them from, from Gen Chem 1. So hydroxide's minus one, and there's two of them for a total of minus two. So manganese would be plus two to balance it out. You can only tell based on what it's with.